Hi there, folks. Today, we're looking at adding and subtracting rational expressions. And if you remember everything else that we've done with rational expressions so far, you'll uh, realize that this is, once again, the same thing as what we do with any fractions that we've ever dealt with, OK? So rational expressions, adding and subtracting them, same as adding and subtracting regular old fractions, all right? Now, granted, when we start to look at it, it'll look more complicated, but it's the same basic principle. So if I look at these two first two examples, just regular old fractions, when I'm adding or subtracting fractions, remember, I need to have common denominators. So if I look at this first one, I have to think about the least common multiple, and the least common multiple between 12 and 36 is 36. It's got to be a number that they can both multiply to become. So like this one, I could multiply this first fraction by 3 over 3, and that would give me a 15 over 36. The second fraction can stay exactly the way it is because it already has a denominator of 36. Now I have common denominators. But after I have common denominators, remember, to add these together, I only add the numerators. The denominator stays the same. So here I add the numerators. That's a 22. The denominator stays the same as a 36. The reason that we need uh, common denominators is because we're, we're kind of one uh, like pieces out of the same amount. Like, if I have 15 out of 36 pieces, and then I have seven more pieces out of the 36, I have a total of 22 pieces out of the 36. That denominator, the, what it's out of, has to stay the same. And then, of course, I would reduce this fraction because I can. So that's an 11 over 18, and that's it. But again, the big thing is we need common denominators. So if I look at this one, again, start thinking about the common denominator between 4 and 3. Something they can both multiply to is going to be a 12. And so this first fraction, I multiply it by 3 over 3. The second fraction, I have to multiply it by 4 over 4. And so that gives me 9 over 12 minus 4 over 12. And now I have common denominators. I subtract those numerators. Denominator stays the same. So that's a 5 over 12, which can't be reduced, and that's it. All right? And see, the thing about this, the only thing that makes this easier than what we're about to do is the fact that we understand how numbers work so well that we can immediately look at that and say, oh, the least common multiple is 36. The least common multiple is 12, all right, because our understanding of numbers is very thorough, all right? With rational expressions, we might have to work a little bit harder to get that common denominator. So let's start off with some easy ones here. Uh, adding and subtracting rational expressions, we have to find common denominators, just like we did with regular old numbers. Then we have to add or subtract the numerator and leave the denominator the same. All right. And then after we do that, we'll reduce the fraction if we can uh, reduce the answer. But it's very unlikely that that's going to happen. So don't worry about that too much. OK? For example, if I look at this guy, I need common denominators. They both already have a denominator of 3y, so I already have common denominators. So if I was going to add these together, I would add the numerators. That's an 11. The denominator would stay the same. That's a 3y. And there's nothing else I can do there. It doesn't reduce. That's it. All right. So just understand, it's the same thing as what we're doing. Even though it's a 3y, that doesn't matter. All right. It's the same approach that we took to fraction 4. Here, the denominators are already the same, so I add the numerators. That's a 4x. The denominator stays the same. That's an x minus 2. And you can't reduce this. No, you can't reduce the 4 and the 2 because you can only cancel out common factors. And this 2 is not a factor. It's a term, all right? So you can't cancel out that guy because it's not a factor. It's only a term. And that's it. This one, once again, we have the same denominator area. So I subtract the numerator. Denominator stays the same. And just be careful here as you subtract 9x minus 3x is a 6x. Negative 3 minus 5 is a negative 8. And then the denominator stays the same. And if you need to, change subtraction to adding the opposite. It's adding the opposite of the same because we're subtracting that entire numerator. All right, And it's the same thing we did when we were adding and subtracting polynomials. But now this one, I can factor this thing. And so now we're reducing the same way we've been reducing. The numerator, I can factor out a 2, which leaves me with a 3x minus 4. The denominator, I can factor it out 2, which leaves me with a 5x minus 2. And now the 2's cancel, so I cancel out the common factors. So I'm left with a 3x minus 4 over a 5x minus 2. And again, when we get to the more complicated examples, it's going to be pretty unlikely that it will reduce, but we, we try anyway. Okay. Uh, this one, same kind of thing. And if you want to change subtraction to adding the opposite, so change that to addition, and then do the opposite of each of these. All right. Again, it's because we're subtracting polynomials. 
the denominator is already the same, so now I subtract. That's a 3x, uh, 5, and a negative 3 is a plus 2. And then the denominator, that's a 3x squared minus x minus 2. And then from here, we want to reduce that thing if we can. Remember, to reduce this, you have to build a bridge in that denominator. If you build a bridge, that gives you a negative 6. Let me take it off to the side. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 6 but add to a negative 1 are a negative 3 and a positive 2. And uh, you might have to take that off to the side and split up the middle term and factor by grouping. I'm going to do my shortcut because I'm amazing and I can do one. That gives me a 3x plus 2 and an x minus 1. And so when I get to this point, I realize nothing cancels out, so I could have just left it like this. Okay, So that would be an acceptable answer. Or if you have it in factored form, that would be OK as well. All right. But again, we just need common denominators. For each of these, we already had common denominators, OK? So now let's look at it when we don't have common denominators and try to get common denominators. If I look at this one, and so what I want to do here, instead of just thinking about, all right, what number do I need to get to, I think about it in terms of the factors of this thing. Like when I look at this first fraction, it's got a factor of y. When I look at the second fraction, it's got a factor of 3 and a factor of y. And so the, the idea behind common denominators with polynomials is just trying to make sure it gets all of the factors that we need. So they each have a factor of y, so I need that. The second one has a factor of 3, so we need that. The first one doesn't have anything else, so the, the common factor, the, the, the common denominator is going to be a 3y. And really, to get that, we just got to make sure that that first denominator gets the 3 that it needs. So if I multiply this one by 3 over 3. And see, the way I look at this is I kind of think of it as uh, making sure that everybody gets what they want, uh, kind of like with, with kids. You know, If you have a, a kid that's got a cookie and a brownie and another kid that only has a cookie, well, guess what? To make things fair, you got to give them a brownie also. So if the three is a cookie and the, the, the Y is a brownie, that first guy, he's missing the cookie, so you give him the cookie. And now everybody's got the same stuff, so everybody's happy. All right. So think about the factors and think, OK, everybody's got to get all the same factors to make this thing happy and then we'll have common denominators. And now from here, I multiply out that numerator. That's a 3x plus 6. The denominator is a 3y. Now I have the same denominator. Now I can add them up. Okay. So again, I just combine like terms. That's going to give me a 7x plus 6 over a 3y. And that doesn't reduce, so that's my answer. Okay. But again, it's about thinking about what do they have, what does each one need. All right. Same thing with this one. Start thinking about the factors that each of these has. Okay, They each have 1x, right? At least 1x. And then the second factor has a 2. Uh, the second denominator has a 2. The first denominator has a 5. And the, the first denominator also has a second x, so it has two x's. So I'm just kind of writing all this down. So the common denominator there would be a 10x squared. All right, And it's about thinking about what each of them has and what each of them needs, like this first denominator needs a 2 because the second denominator has a 2. The second denominator needs a 5 because the first denominator has a 5. And then the second denominator also needs another x because that's what x squared is. It's two x's. The second denominator only has one x. It needs another x. All right. So it's about giving each one what they need. And so here, the common denominator is going to be a 10x squared. So the first uh, fraction becomes a 6x over a 10x squared. The second fraction, again, this is my distributive property when I multiply this out. That's going to be a 5x squared minus 5x over a 10x squared. Now the denominator is the same. I can change this to adding the opposite if I would like uh, to make things a little bit easier for myself. And that gives me a negative 5x squared uh, plus 11x all over 10x squared. But I can factor this thing a little bit. Here I can factor out an x. And again, that denominator, sorry, I got a little sloppy there. Whoops, I erased too much. Uh, remember, the, the 10x squared, that's like an x times x, so now one of the x's cancels. And so my end result here is going to be a 5, sorry, a negative 5x plus 11 all over a 10x. And really, if you look at the original problem, there was something I could have simplified before I started. Right here, this first fraction, 
I can reduce it by a factor of x, and then I could get a smaller common denominator, all right? And so part of the reason this one had to reduce at the end is because I could have reduced at the beginning, okay? If I look at this one, again, think about what each one has, and that will help you determine what each one needs. And so think about all the factors here. They each already have a factor of 4, but then the first one has a factor of x minus 2. So the common denominator is going to be a combination of all the factors that they have. And so think about it this way. The first one doesn't need anything. It already has a 4 like the second uh, fraction, but the second fraction needs the x minus 2. All right? And if you give it an x minus 2, now it'll have all the same stuff as that first fraction. Okay? And again, got to use your distributive property there. It becomes a 7x plus 5 over the 4 times x minus 2. This guy becomes a 3x minus 6x. Oh, you might have to use your imagination on that 3. Let me, let me try again. And again, you, the denominator you can just leave in factored form because that doesn't matter, all right? But now the numerator, if you want to change that to adding the opposite, we just combine the like terms here. That's going to give me a 4x and a plus 11. The denominator stays the same. And see, again, once I have those common denominators, it's the same thing that I've been dealing with when I, when I looked at fractions before all of this, okay? It's just a little bit trickier to get the common denominators now. So same thing with this one. Look at what each of them has, and hopefully you can start formulating and saying, okay, I can see what the common denominator is because I can see all the factors. I need to take each of the factors they have and, and combine them together. And so when you look at that second uh, fraction, it's got an x plus 1 and x minus 3. The first fraction only has an x plus 1, so the second fraction's already happy. It already has the x plus 1. The first fraction needs what the other one has. It needs an x minus 3. So you give them an x minus 3. See, now they'll all have the same stuff. They'll each have an x plus 1. They'll each have an x minus 3. And again, that first fraction, that's my distributive property. That's a 6x minus 18. The denominator you can just leave in factored form. And again, the second fraction is already happy. It's already got everything it needs. And now I add the numerators, denominator stays the same. It's a matter of combining like terms. That's a 10x uh, minus 15. And then down here, that's an x minus 3 and an x plus 1. The denominator stays the same. And this one, I could factor the numerator factor of 5 out. But if you factor 5 out, it's going to leave me with a 2x minus 3. That's not going to reduce anyway. So I'm not going to bother. I'm going to leave it the way it is. If you did factor the 5 out and wrote it as 5, I guess I'll write it, times 2x minus 3, this would be OK also. All right, But it's unnecessary because we're only factoring this thing to see if I can reduce the fraction, and I can't. Okay, So that would also be an acceptable answer. All right. So now we get to the complicated examples, Okay, a couple of these. When I look at this one, it looks like the first fraction needs an x squared minus 8x minus 9. And it looks like the second fraction needs an x minus 9. But see, the, the thing is, these are not in factored form, so it's hard to tell which factors they need. I need to factor this thing. Like, the x minus 9 is fine the way it is. But this guy right here, two numbers that multiply to a negative 9 but add to a negative 8, would be an x minus 9 and an x plus 1. And so if you think about the denominator as this instead, now can you see that the first fraction just needs an x plus 1? And the second fraction doesn't really need anything. See, the second fraction, really what it has is an x minus 9 and an x plus 1, all right? The first fraction only has the x minus 9. It just needs the x plus 1, okay? And now, again, I'm going to multiply that out. That's an x squared uh, plus 2x plus 1x is a plus 3x. The denominator is an x plus 1 and an x minus 9, which is exactly what the second denominator is. And the second denominator happened to be that without us doing anything. So again, to identify the common denominators, you have to write this thing in factored form first is really the trick here. Okay. And now I'm going to add them up, combine like terms. That's a 2x squared, a plus 3x, 
and it looks like the uh, the twos cancel, so I'm left with this. Again, there's a common factor of x here, which you could factor out the x, but it doesn't give us anything that's going to cancel, so we can leave our answer like this, all right? But again, put it in factored form first so we can identify what each one needs, all right? So this one, same kind of thing. That first fraction, build a bridge, factor this thing. This thing factors into an x minus 4 and an x plus 2. And so if I think of it that way instead, it'll be a little bit easier to identify the common factors, all right, and to see what each one needs. The second one, this factors into an x minus 4 and an x plus 3 if I build a bridge. And so now if I look at it kind of like I did on the previous page, see, they each already have an x minus 4. They don't, they're not worried about that guy, but that first fraction is going to say, hey, that other fraction has an x plus 3. I want one of those too. So you give it the x plus 3. See, now that first fraction has an x plus 3, an x minus 4, and an x plus 2. The second fraction has an x minus 4 and an x plus 3. It needs an x plus 2. But again, we got to put this thing in factored form in order to identify that. See, now, if I look at the denominators, they each have an x plus 3, they each have an x plus 2, and they each have an x minus 4. They all have the same stuff. And now it's time to multiply. So this one, let's see, that gives me an x squared uh, minus x and a plus 3x is a plus 2x minus 3. The denominator, again, I'm just going to leave it as x plus 3, the x minus 4. I just write these down in factored form, and the x plus 2. This one, I have to distribute that 2x. That's a 2x squared plus 4x. And then the denominator, it's all this same stuff. And the order in which you write these denominators, it doesn't matter. But now, once again, I can change subtraction to adding the opposite, if you would like. And now it's combining like terms. I get a negative x squared, I get a minus 2x, and I get a minus 3. And then that denominator, once again, stays exactly the way it is. I got common denominators so that I could add or subtract the numerators, and the denominator stays the same. And that's it. But again, the key to this thing and the big difference between this and when we're dealing with just numbers is when I'm dealing with just numbers, sorry, this 3 is a little, little wonky in there, when I'm dealing with just numbers, it's easy to identify the common denominator without doing any work. Here, we have to factor the thing and make sure every denominator gets what the other one has, okay?